Okay, we're back live at Strata Conference. Uh, this is the conference of big data, and this is SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv's flagship telecast, where we go out to all the top events and technology and talk to the smartest people we can find, CEOs, entrepreneurs, venture capitalists, whoever's got the signal from the noise, extract that metadata, share that with you. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're here with Dave Rich, who's the CEO of Revolution Analytics, new CEO. You've been on just a few weeks. David, welcome. Uh, we broke oh, that you. story on SiliconAngle.com. <laughs> yes, you did, yes, you did. Yeah, so, um, well, welcome to theCUBE, and welcome to Revolution uh, analytics, welcome to Big Data, although you've been in analytics for quite some time, right? Coming from uh, Accenture Analytics, so you got a big background in analytics and services. Yes, sir. And, uh, so, uh, what brought you here? Well, to this event, obviously, this is one of the premier events. Uh, I think, uh, if, if anything, it really gives you the heartbeat and the pulse, if not, uh, if not the brains of, of, of the business. And, and as I was commenting to some of my colleagues, is, is I view it uh, uh, as uh, as the end of the beginning. Uh, you, you just what look, do you mean by that? Well, you know, if you look at uh, uh, this year's uh, conference and, and, and certainly in the exhibit hall, you know, some some name brand companies that might not have showed up in force uh, as, as, the, as perhaps otherwise would, you know, people like EMC and Microsoft and Oracle, and, and uh, I actually view it as a good thing. I, I, what that says is is that. Uh, uh, the enterprise adoption curve is, is about to go you know, skyrocketing, which is exciting to me as a, as a professional who's been in the business three decades, and uh, certainly uh, as, a, as it relates to the revolution analytics, we think we're in a, in a great spot to take advantage of that. You guys have great popularity and notoriety amongst the tech geeks and the alpha geeks that people have been using R. It's been a great tool for, for people playing with data, partying with data, and all the good stuff. Uh, you're now the CEO, you've come from uh, a business that people can relate to Accenture, um, and they've been usually talking to clients about improving their business, and you know, it's a consulting, management consulting company, you know, process improvement, blah, blah, blah. Big Data is offering probably one of the most unique opportunities right now to change business um, landscape across the board, you know, financial services, healthcare, society, everywhere. As a CEO of Revolution Analytics, what's it like now that you have this vision of, of R going mainstream? You mentioned Microsoft, uh, IBM even has you on the price list now. You guys are a great brand, and it's still the opening bell, if you will, of this marketplace. So, what do you? What's your strategy? What's what's your what's your to do list for the company, and what's your vision? Well, it's kind of interesting. I, I brought a little of my to-do list from my previous role in my previous employer, which you know what what I saw when I was there was is that we were at the beginning of a big business transformation. I likened it to what business process uh, reengineering was back t two decades ago, and and the wave of innovation, technology innovation, that sort of accompanied that as the enabling platform, if you will. Uh, I think you know what uh, what. What, what business process reengineering was to client server, e-commerce, a few other things, you know, we, we called it decision process reengineering. And that's the next new big management wave is just taking a look at the fundamental ways an organization makes decisions, critical decisions. And then the promise of what big data and certainly increasingly uh, almost endless sources of potential data to bring to that process uh, and, and to make people more informed decision makers, you know, that's certainly what, what we were about, you know, being, as you pointed out, a management yeah. consultancy leading that wave. I had the opportunity to come to the other side, you know, sort of bottoms up to say, well, we could be the, the enabling platform, if you will, we and our partners, to enable businesses to do those, uh, those types of transformations, to your point. We have uh, at SiliconANGLE a new vertical that we launched last year called Services Angle, and, and no one's really covering the services business, and I wrote in a post yesterday on Forbes um, about big data here at Strata and some of the trends changing the world, and I, and I said the statement in my post that uh, in this tsunami of innovation and creation, this invention that's going on with big data, there's a lot of products, companies coming out of the Hadoop and everything else, SaaS, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, but the side effect of all this is a boom in the services business. Every startup I talk to, every company is like, ah, yeah, and we're launching as a service first to learn the market requirements. One, do you see the same thing? Uh, and two, what, what's happening in the services revolution, if this is truly a side effect, what, what kinds of value chains will be disrupted? What kinds of services will we see uh, from drawing on your experience in, in the management consulting services business? 
I mean, we're hearing EMC's doing well on the consulting side, Hadoop with Cloudera, they got great revenue. Um, every startup that's out there has to sit down and go hand to hand with clients and there's a big services component. There's pure play service startups no, I think, coming. I think that's right and, and um, you know, frankly, as long as there's technology and new technology, there'll be technology consulting and, and associated services. But I actually think there's an opportunity to even take it even a step further, which uh, uh, there's a term out there in the services parlance called knowledge process outsourcing, which is sort of the next new thing after business process outsourcing. And uh, if you think about uh, what the potential of having data, having, having the ability to quickly sift through it, and more importantly, have the, the, the data scientists, which are hard to come by, by the way, uh, and then marrying that with good business people to come up with insights, I think you're going to see a whole range of businesses that may be illustrative. You know, uh, people doing fraud as a service or people doing customer acquisition and retention as a service uh, and be much more outcomes based, much more um, you know, reliant on a platform and reliant on data and marrying that with the services capability and then the commercial arrangement with the client would be a gain sharing type model. And that will totally disrupt, I believe, the typical time and materials, services and consulting business in, in, in profound ways. Uh, and uh, I think that that's the next new convergence is people with data, people with platforms, people with, uh, with, uh, with business insights, you know, bringing that together in, in the form of an integrated service will be the key, uh, the key uh, next wave in my view. Do you see peer insights as also having an impact? In other words, the ability for the crowd to operate on those analytics in a way that um, maybe heretofore only, you know, a, a large consulting firm could. Well, I think, uh, I'm glad you said that. I, uh, the, the reason I uh, joined a, a very enthusiastically Revolution and, uh, and, and agreed to take this on is I think Revolution has the opportunity uh, as the storefront, if you will, of the community, you know, to crowdsource, you know, with, with the help of the community and the involvement of the community. Uh, and, and again, I'm, I'm drawing on my experience, you know, in the past coming from Accenture where we had a very robust knowledge exchange which tied all of our 250,000 professionals together where we shared in our knowledge capital, our know-how, and, 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 and frankly, that was a closed community. Could you imagine if you were much more open where knowledge was being shared and captured. And, and, and um, I think that the opportunity for a revolution uh, is, is that we could effectively uh, orchestrate that, facilitate that, you know, that, that knowledge exchange, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, and, and in fact be much more of a two-way perhaps, you know, where you could actually crowdsource business problems. You go out to the community uh, and in fact, you know, they, you know, if you have the right, the right mechanism in place, you know, they can even contribute to the collective uh, uh, knowledge capital. When you join Revolution Analytics, um, what impressed you about R? I mean, because obviously you go into a company that's doing very, very well, but they have a good product, right? So was that the product? Was it the team? All of the above? What, what got you really fired up to come in and, and take over the helm at Revolution? Well, I do think it, first of all, it's a good team. I think the team has been assembled there, has a passion for what this could be as well as what it is. Uh, we, uh, the products themselves, I think, uh, the work that has been done over the last two years, not just to create the market presence, but to create uh, the first uh, set of foundational products, I think, is, is uh, you know, excellent. And I do think that you know, it's, it's at that position to really, to really take off. And, and my hopeful contribution will be the fact that uh, you know, the last three decades, in some form or fashion, I've been a, a student, I, I call myself a, a cultural anthropologist, except that the culture I'm talking about is what it takes to, to go into an enterprise and, 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 and essentially you know, uh, insert new technology and watch the, the assimilation occur. And I think that we're at that point, and the revolution, I think, is, uh, uh, is, is in a unique posi position to take advantage of that. So you guys are all about our, our big user base, probably a couple million users, um, but for those who don't know, what, let's talk about what is R and, and why R and then why revolution analytics. So, so why don't we certainly, start with certainly. what is um, R? In the advanced analytics world, there's, there's basically been two major programming languages. So think of it like COBOL, if you will, back in the, in the mainframe days, SAS and, and SPSS. Um, a, a community came along, mostly academics to start, but, but there's an open source community that created a language called R. And again, I'm an, I'm an old timer. It, it reminds me of, of the promise of object-oriented programming. <laughs> but it's just a lot yep. easier to do and take advantage of lots of things. So the new emerging language, and if you go on campus and you ask anybody coming off campus what they're doing, probs and stats and any other course that they have, it's in R. Right, like it's, so, it's like SPSS in our day. You know? Yeah, right, that's right, right. Yeah, was, yeah. So, so, so there's now 
you know, a, a third language emerging on the scene. Uh, and um, uh, it really it does remind me of, of you know, the, 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 the shift from COBOL to C++. And, you know, we, we've seen the movie before in other, in other uh, you know, types of, of IT technology. And, and I think this is where we are, really. And it's a classic. You talk about the, the, the end of the beginning. Right. IBM buys SPSS. Uh, we're an SPSS shop. They totally changed its, its pricing. You know, jacks it up. And we're like, ah, you know, a heart attack, and we had to go renew. Uh, and so, uh, along with the sort of modernity of R, right? You've got the legacy guys just trying to squeeze as much profit out of the the, the base as they can. Okay, so so that's good. Now, now, why Revolution Analytics? Well, not, we think it's uh, actually a good thing. In fact, uh, when when Oracle recently announced that they're standardizing on R. Uh, we actually thought that was a great thing because the same thing happened with Linux. If you think about, you yeah. know, what happened uh, a decade or so ago, you know, with, with Linux, it was it was uh, uh, sort of similar. You know, some of the legacy customers were tired of paying the high license fees, and right. and so they put Red Hat in business. You know, and I think that we, uh, in fact, we say that quite often is we you know, we're the Red Hat of R, uh, and uh, we think we're right in that exact same inflection point that uh, that Red Hat was at, Linux was at. Uh, and and, and uh, that's why we're so excited about our position. So, um, talk a little bit about with your experience in, in, in analytics and business intelligence. Uh, do you see? I mean, obviously these two worlds are coming together, right? Do, but you know, I remember the days of, and it's still they're still here, dashboards and KPIs and balanced scorecards, and it really became a, a, a staple of reporting, and everybody wanted to get beyond reporting into uh, predictive analytics, and you know kind of happened, but it wasn't the epiphany that we feels like now with big data. Are those two businesses coming together? Oh, absolutely. What, what I, do you envision for that? Yeah, I think uh, the, way, the way I describe it is is that uh, rudimentary management reporting, don't confuse management reporting with predictive analytics, <laughs> uh, but I do think that uh, performance management you know, meeting predictive analytics at scale is, is what the opportunity is. And so uh, in my former role, you know, I used to say that uh, uh, BI or descriptive analytics is all about the what. That's the data, it's the what, what happened. Uh, and uh, what it really doesn't do is give you the so what, or more importantly, the now what. And so that's the promise of the marriage of the two, is being able to uh, do a quick situational assessment and then you know, with, with uh, some of these predictive analytics techniques, helping clients gain the, not just the insights, but then perhaps even inform better decisions, which is why we say decision process re-engineering uh, is, is really going to be the next new management wave. What's the strategy for you guys this year? So now you guys got uh, some good partnerships, obviously great traction. What's next? What's your, what's your outlook and strategy for the, the company as you take it forward? Yeah, being, being, taking the foundational building blocks that we have and, and creating what I call role-based workbenches. So things that if you are a programmer, view it as like a programmer's workbench or a designer's workbench or an installer's workbench. Or if you're actually uh, in, uh, in uh, the stat department, you know, it helps you, you know, be able to, uh, to effectively uh, 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 you know, create better use cases and what have you. So we're focused on creating those, um, what, I, what I think would be critical to any kind of enterprise adoption, uh, those, those role-based templates and tools to improve the productivity, both of the people that are in the IT department or the people responsible for the environment, and as well as the practitioners, you know, needing to have you know, productivity aids to make it easier and more accessible. Talk about some of the partnerships you guys have done as, uh, as an example of the kind of relationships you have in the marketplace, and talk about the kinds of things you'll be do, doing going forward. Well, I think you, you mentioned one. I think we were just recently added to the price list for Natiza and, and with IBM. So that's a great partnership, and we're excited about that opportunity. Uh, there's more to follow. I know that uh, uh, Teradata are, and others are, are companies in EMC, Greenplum. I mean, I'm sure there'll be more that'll, that will want to do that, but we're pretty, particularly excited about our relationship with Cloudera and just you know getting into the whole uh, uh, world of Hadoop, and 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 um, so we're 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 going to be a little bi-directional in some of our thinking. Uh, and uh, you know what I mean by that is is that there's still a lot of on-premise environments out there. Yet increasingly, there's going to be a lot more that are going to be you know off-prem or some hybrid solutions. So we need to have platforms that are either for the cloud or, or private clouds, and then some that are more in the traditional data appliance uh, arena. Okay, so where our goes, you go, and, uh, and make it better along the way. That's really the strategy. All right, David. David Rich, thank you very much for coming on to the Cube. It was great having you. Good luck with the, with the new role. Thank you. It's a pleasure seeing you. Okay, thanks for joining. Welcome, welcome to the Cube.